Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. We appreciate you joining us today. Well, several months back, we did a video on the Canic TP9 Elite Combat. And at the time we did that video, had several requests for us to cover the subcompact version of that pistol, which we now have and we're going to do today. And some of the questions that have come up, is this really a subcompact pistol? Is this a good choice for concealed carry? And we're going to get into all the details and all the features. We're going to try to answer those questions for you in just a minute. All right, welcome back once again. We sure appreciate you joining us today. And before we get too far into anything, I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of our viewers and all of our subscribers. Uh, we can't thank you enough. Everyone's really helping to make this a success and exchanging information. And um, if you've been watching and you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, or if this is your first time, if you could locate that little subscribe button in your lower right hand portion of your computer screen there if you're on a mobile device you can scroll down below the video and hit subscribe then hit the bell icon it'll let you know whenever we do something new it helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it so canic tp9 elite combat this is the uh tungsten uh subcompact here now there's been some discussion about the proper pronunciation of this firearm. Um, basically, um, if you're from Turkey, if you're over there and you were talking about this gun, um, I believe it's uh, Shanik or Shanik is the way they pronounce it. Um, but here in America, even by Century Arms, the importer, it goes by Canik. So for the interest of keeping with... Uh, what the importer says, we're just going to refer to these as Canic Firearms, and that's that. So, we of course want to take a moment to uh, thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing us this beautiful example of the Canic TP9 Elite Subcompact in Tungsten for our tabletop review today. They are big supporters of gun safety and education, and we can't thank them enough. So let's take a look at this guy. We always like to start with um, obviously a little side-by-side -side comparison. And so we're going to do that again today. So, and looking at this, I'm going to lay this guy down here. And the pistol is classified as a subcompact. But I want to show you something. Um, the first thing that I'm going to compare it to and you can see that we have ourselves a nice empty Glock 19. I know what you're thinking. Why are you getting out a Glock 19 to put next to this? And I'll tell you why. Because it's a lot closer. The majority of the handgun, and I'm talking, you know, if you look at it from the trigger guard, the up, you know, the frame and the slide. If you look at it right like this, this handgun is a lot closer to a compact firearm. Now it's the grip where things change. If you take a look, as you can see, there's a lot more grip on say a Glock 19 than you have on the Canic. This can actually be even shorter because there's a uh, optional flat plate that you can get for concealment. But we're going to use this for just a moment, and I'm going to compare it to another gun in just a second. But I want you to take a look here. When you look at them as far as thickness, very similar. Look at it from the back, you can see that the Canic is right there with the Glock 19 as far as the thickness and of course you can see the grip right here is where it becomes obvious that the Glock 19 has the bigger grip now having said that if I take a in this case Glock 27 um, Glock 26 and 27 are obviously the same exact size I have to have a 27 here so we'll use that because um, this is Glock's subcompact pistol and if you set this next to the 
TP9, you'll see that in the grip department, things get a lot closer. But as far as the slide and the trigger guard, and even the frame, um, this gun is definitely going to be smaller than the Canik. So it's almost like just in the grip, really, it's a it's a subcompact. Everything on the on the the trigger guard up to me, this is this is like a compact size pistol. Now, having said that, that doesn't mean it's you know not a good size for carry and we'll cover all that of course as we go but i just want you to be aware of that because these are two pretty common pistols that uh most people are familiar with and uh it gives you a pretty good idea you know of what you're actually looking at on size if you're going to carry this gun on a regular basis and that's really the reason why we do that particular type of comparison anyway not because the guns are even alike it's just because we want you to have a good idea of how that gun's going to feel when it's on the body, when you're actually carrying it on a daily basis. Okay, well, let's talk about the features. Got to give Canic credit where credit is due. Um, Canic pistols, they tend to give you um, a lot of stuff. You know, there's a lot of, of accessories and add-ons and things that come with the firearm at a much lower price point than a lot of your, you know, polymer striker fired guns. And so with that in mind, I just want to kind of show you what you get with this gun. Now, we're going to, of course, show that we are cleared. There's your empty magazine. And of course, you can see straight through to the firearm. You can see the um, barrel and the feed ramp so you know that we are safe and we are clear. So, first thing um, in my hand here you can see we have a 12 round magazine which is the standard one for the pistol. You can also see that it has a little extension for the finger. Now when I hold this gun um, I freely admit I have you know pretty big hands um, medium to I guess large size hands. I've seen other people grip this same firearm and their pinky is well well up into this part of the extension their third finger so I guess my fingers are just bigger but looking at it you can see that with that plate uh, with that um, pinky extension plate there it does pretty well. Now they actually give you a flat plate here if you want to make this even more compact you can put this on as you can see that would make it you know a little bit you know you'd get rid of that little bit right there um, as far as making it more concealable now for me um, this is not a, a big deal at all now they actually give you a another magazine with this and as you can see this is a 15 round extended magazine and when you put this one in the firearm even someone like me who has larger fingers this is a really 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 good grip and and what you've done at this point whenever you've put the extension in there I'm gonna bring the Glock 19 back for a second and then take a look at what we've done here you've essentially given back the grip difference that you had with the smaller magazine. Now, obviously it's a little bit better because if you'll notice this space here is deliberately not filled by the, you know, extended magazine. It doesn't come all the way back. That was deliberate because this area, um, when this is in the holster, obviously if you have the weapon you know, canted at all, this is the area that tends to print the worst. Now, um, the idea behind this was not to have this space, but now you have two points of contact. So I'm not really sure whether that's going to make it, whether that's going to help or hurt on printing or not. Um, for some people, I'll talk about how it worked out for me because I used both magazines whenever I covered the uh, carry section. But I know what they were thinking and I'll, I'll tell you how it actually worked out for me. But anyway, uh, it's comfortable to carry with either magazine in place, so that's no issue there. Um, drawing your attention, of course, for 
this is our magazine release. This is reversible, which is kind of nice. So you can do that if you want to. Your slide stop and release, this is ambidextrous. Now keep in mind, it looks pretty significant, and it is. And if you look at it from the top, you'll see that that's actually the widest part of the firearm. It's just something to keep in mind. You know, I don't think it's uncomfortable at all to carry, and we'll cover that when we get to the carry section, but that is the widest point on the gun. You've got your takedown lever here. They're on both sides of the firearm, similar to what a Glock does and, and some other guns that have this type of pull-down for the release. Um, you have, let's, looking at your grip, you've got your nubs on the front here, which are good. I mean, you, it, it's not uncomfortable, but it's fairly aggressive. And then, of course, this texturing here is pretty good. And it's not uncomfortable after a lot of shooting. I'll get to that when we cover the range portion. Um, you got your back strap here. They actually, once again, they give you more stuff. If that back strap is not quite doing it for you, you've got a bigger one here that you can install on the firearm. Now, like I said, I've got pretty big hands, and with the standard back strap, the gun fits my hand very well and it's pretty comfortable so even i didn't have to go to the larger one but if you are a person that has really large hands it's available so it's good that you can do that it does have a accessory rail um, so if you're the type of individual that likes to put lights and lasers on your pistol whether this is a carry pistol or whether you keep it uh, as a home defense pistol you're able to do that and i, I like that um, if you look at the slide, direct your attention, you'll see that you've got serrations for a good portion of the rear of the slide. And then on the front, you can see that, if you look at it closely, you can see they're pretty pronounced here on the lower part of the slide, then they just kind of fade into not much here at the top. But they're very good. I mean, even with gloves, I can feel this on the front. So if you're going to rack the slide from the front, you can do it easily, and you can really do it easy with these from the rear. So I think that's a nice design. Um, let's talk about the sights. This has got, you know, you've got your little combat style um, you know, rear sight here. And then that front side, if you look at it, it's a dot. Well, it's a yellow dot, but and the reason why is this is, this has one of those um, uh, glow sights. You know, it's a phosphorus front white dot sight. And I did a review on the HK P30SK um, some time back, and it has the same type of sight on it. I'm not saying that there's an issue with it, um, but the problem is, is that that sight has to be charged. And I'll show you what I mean. So we're just sitting here looking at it. Nothing significant. If I hit this with a high-intensity light for just a moment, you could see that it will actually glow a little bit in front of us see that even with all the lights on you can see that happen now if we were to make things a little bit darker which I'm gonna do for you here because I think it's worth taking a look at we'll darken things up just a little bit more and let's do that again. So pay attention to that front sight. And I'm going to hit it with the light. You see that? It gets intense. Really intense for a few seconds. And it holds kind of a steady glow after that. But not for awfully long. And that's just kind of the nature of how this thing is, uh, is made. The reason I bring this up and why I even bothered to show you that, because like I say, honestly, it's not my favorite sighting system in the world. But the reason I showed it to you, it's still pretty good visibility on a front sight. And I think that on a carry gun, you know, as long as you have a good high visibility front sight to where you can get a good sight picture and you can acquire it, you know, quickly over and over again, I think it's good. If you don't have actual tritium sights that keep themselves charged, I don't think you're going to have a, a whole lot of luck anyway um, using those sites at night just because you're going to run into limitations as far as, you know, if the sites don't charge themselves, you're not really going to be able to see anything anyway. 
for situations at night, if it's so dark that you can't see the target, you know, if it's literally so dark that a pair of, of tritium sights would be necessary to even make a sight picture, it might very well, you know, be too dark for you to actually have a, a threat. You know, if you can't see your sights, you probably can't even see the target. These are just things to think about when you consider what type of um, sighting system you're going to have on the gun. Having said that, um, I still think, like I said, the front sight is good visibility, so I still think it's uh, it's good to go. So one of the other things that they give you here that's kind of cool, um, this has a optics mounting plate on the top, and you know you've got a, a toolkit that comes with the firearm that you can use to do your mounting of optics and all that kind of good stuff. Now on this particular gun, um, the optic that this is designed to work with is what they call the Shield Reflex Mini. Um, and you can search and find that one pretty easy. I don't have one mounted um, to this particular firearm um, because I, you know, I, I'm okay with certain firearms having optics, but I don't usually do it on my carry guns. I made a couple of exceptions, uh, you know, like the P365, uh, just because the Romeo Zero was, uh, I thought it was well done, so I am okay with that. But I usually don't add um, optics to my guns. But that's the one that you use with this one. So it's kind of nice to give you a little toolkit to uh, support the stuff you need to do with the firearm. And looking at the top of the slide here, you do have a loaded uh, chamber indicator. And then, of course, um, you have another indicator on the rear. Whenever the pistol is cocked and the striker is ready to fire, you see this pin. Um, once again, we're going to verify that we are clear before we do our demonstration here, and you can see we are clear and safe. But if you look at that indicator, watch, you see it there, and now you don't. Let's do that again. There it is, you're ready to fire, then you pull the trigger, and it's gone, just like that. Um, so, pretty nice set of features. You know, I think that uh, they've gone through a decent amount of trouble to think about the kinds of things that you need on a gun like this. Um, something else, this is a small thing, but I noticed that if you look right down here, and I'll bring it in the light so you can really see it. See that little bevel right there, that cutout? Um, that small degree of that on the bottom of the grip, if you're trying to strip out a magazine, it's just enough that if it doesn't eject easily, you can get your fingers in there and strip that magazine out. So that's kind of interesting that they thought to put that into the design. Um, it has a pretty good size trigger guard, which is always important to me. Um, like I said, I do have bigger fingers, and I, and I do wear gloves oftentimes whenever I'm uh, shooting or doing certain practice. And then, of course, your trigger. I'll go over more um, about the trigger when we talk about the range portion. I will say that I do like the trigger. And it has this Glock-style you know, trigger safety that's built into the front, too, that actually disappears all the way whenever you engage, unlike the Glock that still stays out a little bit. And um, so overall... You've got a really nice feature set on the firearm. So if you're looking for something that um, has got a lot of features for the money and you like striker fired pistols, this has got a pretty interesting feature set on it from what I can see. All right, well, of course, we're always going to show you how to do the, uh, your basic uh, maintenance procedure. For this, and of course, we're going to make sure we get our magazine egg out once again, make sure we're safe and clear. And you can see by looking at it once again, we are safe and we are clear, nothing going on here. And what you're going to do on this particular firearm is you're going to pull back on the slide ever so slightly, and then here's your takedown lever here where my thumb is. There's one here and there's one on the opposite side. So grab them both at the same time pull back just ever so slightly and pull these down and then let the slide go forward just a little bit. And when it does, you'll see that this little portion of the frame where the slide rides on right there will be inside of the cutout. 
and you're just going to lift it straight off. You don't have to slide this thing off like you would a Glock. It'll come straight up after you advance it forward just slightly. And then you've got this piece. Of course, you've got your spring and your rod assembly here. You just simply, of course, push, and then you can lift that um, right out and away. And uh, the next thing you're going to do, of course, you've got your barrel. You can simply take your finger and tip that up and then grab it and pull that out all the way. And then once you have that out and you can pick your slide up, there are some things you always want to do. I always let people know that when you clean, of course, you want to pay special attention to these, you know, grooves inside the slide where the movement takes place on these pieces that stick out on the frame. Anytime you have an area where things are going to move, you know, back across each other, I always put a drop of oil on these points here. And of course, make sure you get this really good and clean. And then, of course, I always put a drop of oil just in the internals right here not much i don't want it dripping out of the gun but if you get it super clean you oil these points here uh, and put a drop in there you're pretty much going to be good to go and of course if your if your weapon needs something beyond this you need to go see a gunsmith anyway someone who's qualified to do those kinds of things this is you just want to be able to clean it you know make sure you can use it the next time you go and of course going back together is just the opposite of what you did just grab your barrel there and uh, make sure of course the flat part goes toward the top so you're gonna line that up and drop that in just like that your spring you've got a little space here in the front of the slide that this fits into and then once you push that in there of course the big part is going forward you've got this and there's a piece you may be able to see here it drops down ever so slightly you're going to push it in so it'll drop down in that little slot. And you know it's correct because if you look at it from the side, you'll see that it's relatively level there. And then you just come back the way you did before. You've got this cutout in the slide here, which you line back up over that section that you lifted the gun off of. And so you're going to come just back down and then pull it back all the way. And then just function check your weapon. You can see we're good to go there. Very, very simple. Um, you know, as I said, it's a lot like a Glock in the sense that it's got the two pieces on either side of the frame for you to take it down. It's a little bit different because, like I say, it doesn't slide all the way off. Once you um, release it, you just go forward ever so slightly, just maybe um, not even a half an inch, and the whole thing lifts off. But it's a very simple procedure. So, not bad at all. All right, well, let's talk about the range. I'm lucky that I bought plenty of 9mm ammo before it became, um, you know, harder to get than it is now. So, the, uh, the rounds I'm using were, I paid a lot less for them than I would be today. Um, because, I have to say, I've got a lot of 9mm pistols, and um, this particular um, one... The Canik TP9, um, the full size shot really well. And so I was really pretty excited to see how we were going to, you know, perform with the subcompact. Especially, you know, once I got to looking at it and realized that the, the slide's pretty big. It's more like a compact, in my opinion. And so I was kind of looking forward to that same kind of control, you know, that I get out of, say, a Glock 19. Having said that, let's talk about what actually happened. So... Let's look at this trigger. Um, I was talking to you about this. Once again, we are safe and we are clear. Um, the action on the trigger, it, it, it's really kind of smooth. It, it doesn't really start to grab, and I call it grab because some triggers just seem to just go back. This one, it's almost like you, you pull up the original bit of slack on the trigger here, and then you can feel there's a definite moment here where you were into the, you know, the weight of the trigger. So you come back. Now watch the take, watch the reset on this trigger. Okay. I've, I've heard people say, well, it's a pretty good trigger, but it didn't have very good reset. Um, I disagree. This, I mean, it's not an SRT, you know, it's not a short reset trigger, but that is 
pretty decent for a little Palmer Striker fired pistol. I mean, I've seen some really high end guns that don't have as good of a trigger reset as this one. So this is pretty good. And the way this translates um, at the range is just as good. Now I will say um, a couple things. So shot this in two configurations. I shot it this way with the uh, 12 round magazine with the pinky extension and using it with the 12 round magazine, it was pretty comfortable. Um, the only problem that I had is that since my finger and like I say, I have larger, you know, hands than many. So when I have my hand, when I'm gripping this, my finger is right there. It's almost, you can see it's almost split in half over the pinky extension. It's good, but as I shot a lot, my finger was really creeping down that pinky extension. Um, Having said that, the accuracy right out of the box uh, was pretty good. I was using Winchester and s and um, uh, Blazer and, you know, regular. I shoot it typically defensively. I practice at 21 feet. And, you know, I was punching nice little sub one-inch groups just right out. It took me a couple of shots, of course, to figure out, you know, the feel of this thing. But uh, within a mag, um, the gun was delivering really nice shots i mean the the front sight like i say the visibility is really good on it so with this sight configuration you know you get the bullseye over the dot and it was delivering really nice um you know one inch groups sometimes better uh, when i was doing better now i will say this much when i changed out this magazine and i put in the 15 round magazine where i could get a really good flat grip on the gun my accuracy got got even better and i started uh trying to see what i could really do i really moved the uh, distance out on the target i shot some i shot some targets a lot further than i normally do uh for practice and uh the gun is very accurate um the trigger is very smooth and the firearm performed really well as far as not having an issue with ammunition um the only I didn't have any actual problems. Um, I had one round of ammunition that was actually damaged, um, and it didn't fire. I did a, uh, a clear operation to get that round out of the magazine, but uh, it, the, the firearm never failed. I had a bad uh, bad round. It was a, um, one of those Blazer 9mm um, rounds that uh, came apart on me. Um, but everything else I ran through this, including hollow points, it just did really, really well. Now, the texturing, you know, a lot of times, this is pretty aggressive. It's, it's not unlike the texturing that you see on a, on a Glock 19. It's just a little bit bigger, and you'd think that that would be really tough on your hand. But I didn't get uncomfortable at all during the time I was shooting this. And so I feel like it's a, a good match think they got just about the right amount of texture on the firearm for what it's meant to do and um, I think it uh, I think it does a pretty good job um, one thing I was going to mention um, you know before I set the firearm down I put a little you know stopper here just something to balance it you know I told you that it seems like it's more of a uh, compact than a subcompact gun well, you can really feel that when you lay it down because the the top of the weapon just like i was showing you initially you know you've got a lot of weight here and a very little grip so if you just lay it down like this it just it tips up because you've got of course there's no uh, rounds in the magazine but i think <clears throat> if you look at it I've had rounds in the magazine and still had it tip up like this, so it's kind of funny. So for the purposes of what we've been doing here, I've been giving you a little, uh, you know, making sure we're using all of our props correctly here. But uh, the gun performed very well at the range. Um, even new shooters who got a chance to get their hands on it, they really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, uh, many of them had never heard of uh, canic firearms before. And so we, you know, went through the trouble of explaining that uh, you know they're imported by Century, and uh, I think we may have made some new fans for the Canic firearms with this little pistol here. But overall, it did very well.
So what's it like to actually carry the Canic TP9 Elite, the subcompact here? Well, I've only got one, um, one version of this that I can talk about uh, because there's only one holster I've been able to use. But the really cool thing is, is that they give it to you. Um, whenever I review the full-size TP9 Elite, I showed you that they give you a uh, little molded um, holster here. And they do the same thing for this one. And I'll show this to you. Um, you know, they only make it in a right hand from what I can see. But the this holster is convertible between um, inside the waistband and outside the waistband. Um, so whichever way that you like to carry, you can do that. But it's a pretty nice little holster that they give you for free with the gun. And it's got pretty good retention. You know, you sit here and shake the gun and um, it's not just going to fall out of there. Now, you know, just being realistic, you know, it's a free holster. So it's not the most, I mean, this part of the holster, the actual, you know, molded portion that the firearm goes in. As you can see, there's a screw if you want to, you know, change the amount of tension that's in here. If you feel like the firearm's a little bit loose, you can adjust that screw right there and make this a little bit better. Um, these clips seem to be the weak point. Um, when I carried this around um, consistently, you could, the, the clips, you know, they start to bend. And I, I'm not sure how much force it would take. I don't think it would break right away, but, but over time, it'd be interesting to see how well um, that little holster holds up over time. But the point is, is that they give it to you free with the firearm, and it's a pretty decent little carry holster. So that goes along with what I was saying about uh, Canik is really good about giving you stuff. Um, so anyway, let's talk about it. So in this holster, which is the only uh, version that I can talk about, um, it's pretty good. I tried it both ways. I've, I've, I wore it outside the waistband, and I flipped it around, and I wore it inside the waistband. And I actually ended up just carrying this one outside the waistband because uh, I did the double shirt thing. And it actually um, was pretty concealable. I was concerned about, you know, the gap right here because they leave this open, especially whenever I carried it with the other magazine. And because, you know, I like to carry with a slight cant. And of course, with this holster, that's what you get. So this is what the top you know, against the body looks like. With a t-shirt and then an outer shirt, um, this really broke up the sharp edges really well coming across the surfaces. So I really didn't have any printing to speak of with two shirts. Now, um, if you wear a single shirt or if you wear a tighter shirt and you're trying to wear that underneath, then that might be a little bit different situation. You might want to go with the smaller mag or you might want to go even with the, um, you know, the flat plate on a smaller mag so you can make this thing you know a lot a lot less obvious underneath your shirt but um, both ways it was pretty comfortable um, like I say it's not a super small gun you know you're talking about either 12 plus 1 or 15 plus 1 and just the way the ammunition itself plus it being like I say closer to a Glock 19 um, you definitely know that you're carrying the gun so if I had to you know rank it against if I had to rank it for comfort um, I could easily say it's as comfortable as carrying a Glock 19 because they're pretty close in size and seem pretty close in weight um, is a subcompact Glock a little easier and lighter to carry? Yeah, yeah. Over the course of uh, of days, you can definitely tell. And you know, something like um, uh, a really subcompact, like a 365, is that going to be even better? Well, yes, definitely. Uh, but once again, you know, you give up things when you go from a bigger firearm to a smaller firearm. But having said that, this is extremely uh, comfortable for its size, and um, I wouldn't have any issue with carrying this on a daily basis if that was the option that I had and had no others because it's not too bad at all. Um, I think they did a good job um, with the features and, and it fits pretty well. And I imagine 
um, if you had a um, high quality holster like a you know an Alienware or a Crossbreed or something that you know had a really high quality you know cowhide or some other type of padding, I bet it would be even nicer than that. And that's the next thing I'm going to be trying with it. But pretty good with their holster. Well, so overall impressions of the Canic TP9 Elite Subcompact in Tungsten. Well, as I said, I believe that Canic gives you a lot for the money. And, you know, if you look at it, I didn't know a whole lot about Canic firearms um, until I picked the first one up several months ago. And after I did, I realized that, you know, Comparing these, I've had a lot of different polymer guns in my hand, you know, whether it's a Glock or an HK or it's a Springfield or a Walther, whatever the case may be. They all seem very similar. Uh, the main differences that I see between them sometimes is, is going to be your build quality and then, of course, what you get. Because certain guns, they seem to be really expensive and they don't give you a whole lot with them. But as far as build quality and materials, um, you know, between these different striker fired pistols, you know, these really seem really, really similar. And this has got a really good price point. Like I said, these are, you know, well below the cost of um, your Glocks and your HKs and, and some of these other pistols. And they've got a really good feature set. You know, the, um, you get, you know, two magazines, you know, a 12 and a 15. I mean, you get, you get two back straps, you get a plate, you got a toolkit for your optics. Um, you know, you get a, a, a holster. And, of course, they give you a, a, you know, a brush and a rod for cleaning. Um, it's just nice. You know, they've given you some stuff um, to where you don't have to spend extra money um, for things that you need for the firearm. And, and like I say, the, the only real negative um, to me isn't a complete negative, and that's just the, the front sight. You know, it's high-vis, so for most things you're going to do, you know, if you got enough light to see, you got enough light to see this sight generally. But I'm not as big of a fan as the glow sights as I would be, you know, say even a fiber optic sight. Because fiber optic sights to me show up a little bit better uh, under the same conditions. But having said that, because it's a, a good color, it's pretty good visibility, it's not really a negative. It's just if you ask me what I would change, that'd be the one thing I would change would be to put, say, a fiber optic sight or an actual tritium sight on there. Uh, beyond that, you know, you've got accessory rail, so you can put your lights and lasers. You've got your optics mount. Um, you know, there's lots of safety features. You know, you got your chamber indicator when it's uh, loaded. You know, whenever the um, gun is ready to fire because you've got another indicator there. And, um, you know, they've just gone through the trouble of giving you a lot good serrations it's just it's not a bad firearm and of course you know when you get it where it really counts out at the range um, it's got a really great trigger and not only does it have a great trigger but the gun feels pretty good in the hand it manages the round pretty well and um, so you know Canic Firearms has done a pretty good job of presenting a I call more of a compact but uh, their subcompact uh, tungsten is a very good offering. So if you're looking at something as a potential carrier weapon, I don't have an issue with this one. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this one. And uh, once again, we really appreciate you guys uh, joining us, taking the time. And if you haven't done so, make sure you take a moment to uh, subscribe. Find that little bu subscribe button in the lower right-hand portion of your screen there. Or if you're on a mobile device, scroll down below the video and hit subscribe and hit the bell icon to let you know whenever we do something new. Everybody, please be safe out there. And um, we can't thank you enough for your support. And um, we'll be back with another video real soon. So we appreciate you once again. Have a good day.